Well, it's late fall slash early winter, and we're heading towards year three of a global pandemic. So by now you all know what that means. Our emergency rooms are filling up with people in severe respiratory distress, meaning people need to delay elective procedures like cancer treatment until we can find more beds and medical staff for them. Love to do this every winter. It's it's just such a good time. This time, it's not just COVID. I mean, it is COVID, but it's also other things like influenza and respiratory syncytial virus, RSV, both of which, like COVID, are viruses that attack the respiratory system. So now we have this triple threat. And Of course, the demographics that seem to be getting hit the hardest are children and seniors. Seniors are being hospitalized at about 10 times the rate that they were at this time of year pre-pandemic. And while that's obviously quite bad, uh, those numbers actually pale in comparison to what's happening to children. Pediatricians in the United States are calling for Joe Biden's administration to declare a national emergency as they run out of hospital beds uh, in the children's hospitals, and they're forced to send kids to other adult community hospitals that are less equipped to care for those children. This burgeoning disaster has a lot of people, and by people, I mostly mean COVID misinformation bots, to say that it's due to something they call immunity debt, which is a concept described by some as an unintended boomerang effect of distancing, masking, and other COVID containment measures used to slow SARS-CoV-2's spread. Honestly, can we just outlaw the practice of having a tiny bit of knowledge because it just, it causes so many problems like this. Uh, like, oh, when your body encounters a disease, it learns how to fight that disease and then remembers it so it'll be better prepared later. Yes, that's true. Oh, so if your body doesn't encounter a disease, it must be weak and a prime attack target. No, that's not true. Let me be very clear. You, as an individual, are not weaker or more prone to infection because you've spent the past two years avoiding diseases. You do not need to get sick in order to be healthy. I've talked about this before way back in the heady days of early spring 2021, which I cannot distinguish in my memory from spring of 2020. They were the same time prove me wrong. Okay, no, there was one major difference, which is that in the spring of 2021, vaccines were finally becoming widely available. So a lot of people were talking about their immune systems and how they wanted the strongest immune system possible. Uh, Because they think of the immune system like a muscle. So obviously, the stronger it is, the better, right? But your immune system is not a muscle, and stronger is not necessarily best for you. You want a balanced immune system, because if your immune system gets too strong, it thinks everything is a threat, and it will go to war against things like the food you're trying to eat in order to survive, or the goddamn flowers you smell. (laughs) And your immune system also differs from a muscle in that it does not get weaker if it's not actively fighting off an infection. As I said in that previous video, the hygiene hypothesis, aka the idea that kids who get sick as kids will grow up to be healthier, has been pretty thoroughly debunked at this point. The reason why people like me who grew up playing in the woods are healthier with fewer allergies isn't because rolling around in the mud got me sick, but because it exposed my body to beneficial microbes, teaching my immune system early on that not every foreign substance is a danger that needs to be attacked. Meanwhile, study after study shows that kids who are exposed to dangerous microbes are more likely to end up damaged as they get older. Children who get viral infections like RSV are significantly more likely to end up with asthma, for instance. COVID mitigation efforts 
might be playing a partial role in this influx of sick kids we're seeing in that babies who were not exposed to RSV in 2020 because they were in quarantine, they're now toddlers entering unmasked preschools where they might pick it up. But here's the thing. That's good that they didn't get it as babies because it's more dangerous the younger you are. It's more dangerous for a baby to catch RSV than a toddler. So the fact that they didn't get it then is actually an argument in favor of the COVID mitigation efforts because they also mitigated RSV and influenza, which are very dangerous to young kids. And the fact that they're now getting RSV and influenza now that we've dropped masking indoors is another vote in favor of continuing to mask up. But experts point out that the number of kids in the hospital right now cannot be fully explained by just a lag in the number of kids who are being exposed to these infections for the first time in two years. They point out that there's something else going on and we need more data and we need to study to figure out exactly what's happening. But there is a pretty obvious lead suspect, COVID. The leading hypothesis now is that COVID is harming the immune system, immunologist Colin Furness told Global News. To what extent and how permanently, these are things we don't know. But that's what the data seem to be telling us, and it's something we should be really concerned about. The leading hypothesis is that a lot of these kids and the seniors uh, were exposed to COVID and they recovered, but the damage to their immune system lasted. And now they're more susceptible to all kinds of nasty viruses, COVID, flu, RSV, other things. Pre-COVID, they may have been able to fight off these infections without requiring hospitalization. But post-COVID, because of the damage to the immune system, these things are much more dangerous. Like I said, it's just a hypothesis, and we won't know for sure for quite some time. But if that is true, it makes this idea of immunity debt much more pernicious than you might think. It's not just a bit of incorrect folk wisdom. It's propaganda that's being spread primarily by the same people who argued that masks won't work, that the vaccines won't work, that we shouldn't quarantine, we shouldn't work from home, we shouldn't move schooling online. They're now arguing that the very small efforts we did make here in the United States and also in Canada actually made things worse by weakening our immune system, when in fact, that is absolutely not true, and it may actually be the opposite. All of those things worked very well, and now that we've stopped doing them entirely, our most at-risk friends and family are getting absolutely walloped. So if you see someone spreading this idea, this debunked idea of immunity debt, don't fall for it. As we head into winter, just know that there is still a pandemic happening. And now we also have these other seasonal bugs to worry about. So mask up in public places, get your flu and COVID boosters if you haven't already, wash your hands, don't touch your face, and please be especially careful if you know that you have close contact with children, seniors, and immunocompromised people. I know... I know you've been caring about other people for two and a half years now, and you're tired, but I guarantee you're not as tired as those little kids in the hospital fighting respiratory infections. 